new squad going right back in. I thought I had a little bit more time. I thought that uh, the Aroha banner was going to be in two days, but apparently it's tomorrow night. Meaning if I'm going to do a rerun, I got to do it today. Because I don't like doing reruns that close to new stuff. So we're going to get this out now with a completely different setup. One that is very effective. I mean, more turns than last time, but it's very stress-free with this squad. You can't tell we're going off turn damage, pumping up our damage. Paladin Cecil's taking care of the orb, making everybody hit harder like he does. And it's kind of cool for off turn setups like this, especially when you have uh, elemental orbs like this one, which is uh, Thunder and Holy. When the off turns go off, whether it be counters, traps, arrows, what have you, each hit will increase the orb. So you'll see it, it's like, in some situations, it's like three hits right in a row. So you'll see it, the orb tick up, like one, two, three. I showcase that, um, actually, actually it's funny thinking about this, with Paladin Cecil, this is back during the Bahamut Lufinia when Kuja came out with his Eldian Burst. That was a stage where the common consensus seemed to be if you didn't have Kuja, you were basically screwed. And although he did make it much easier, that wasn't true at all. I mean, there was the Jack Cheese you could have done, which I don't know if anybody saw that, where Jack could just go and go and go and break him and <laughs> just keep jumping in front of him as long as that uh, that um, bravery gen kept happening on the boss. It was pretty crazy, but... Back then I enchanted Emperor's Traps with Paladin Cecil C65 and it served to satisfy the orb just fine. And the same thing is happening here. When we get there, anyway, we gotta make quick wick of these... Quick wick. Jesus Christ. Quick work of these robots. I'm not gonna edit that out, that's staying. We've already gone too far. Definitely gonna go double speed this time because even... Okay. As fun as this team is, it kind of takes forever compared to stuff that I'm used to doing, because this took like 20 minutes to get this done. So, and I I doubled the speed, and this is still longer than my first team, which was uh, Bartz, Tifa, and Yang. Shocking, right? That that team made quick work of the boss? Of course they did. Okay, there's a reason that I uh, went for the arrows. You'll see it in a second. So we got arrows queued up. Bam! Oh, my phone is overheating? Well, I guess that makes sense given the fact that if you look around, we are in a cesspool of active volcanoes. So no wonder my phone's overheating. That's all right, we'll get this done soon enough. All right. So we still have our Paladin C65 active, so we go right into this wave, able to satisfy the orb. Look, seven, eight, Although, I think he's gonna put the blue aura up. Yup, okay. You cannot, it won't work when they have that aura up. But that's okay, it, it won't be up for long. Uh-oh, what are we gonna do? We can't break him, we're all physical. You already know what's gonna happen. Gallop, that's what's gonna happen. But check this out. Three, four, five, six, beautiful. Not to worry. Shout out to Indolent Lard. Thank you for the Tifa. If you're unfamiliar with him, he uh, he has a YouTube channel. He does... I'm not really much in the character sagas, but I like his because it's Tifa. <laughs> like, I only like character sagas if it's a character I like. And I like Tifa, so I like his character saga. <laughs> I don't think he's doing one anymore. Because, I mean... I don't know, actually. I'd have to ask him. I'm not going to put words in his mouth. But I know for a while he was doing a 7 Saga instead, but I, I don't know if he's still doing the Tifa thing or not. But regardless, he also uh, he also puts plenty of good memes and gifts and stuff in his videos. A lot of really fun intros and stuff. Takes good music, too. You know I'm a sucker for that, so go check him out if you're unfamiliar. Counter! Speaking of Aroha, um, I'm still pulling. I'm, I'm not quite as uh, amped as I was because I realized something. I I was all set to like go in for Aroha, and then I realized 
I barely know what she does. <laughs> like I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna pull. And people are asking me, why are you pulling? And I didn't really have an answer, I'll be honest with you. I just kind of, I just kind of want her. Like I, the only thing I know about her is healing and battery and that she's a good call, but I guess the call's only a two turn duration. So what, what I've been hearing is that she's, and this is, you know, speculative. I don't actually know yet, but she seems to be getting overhyped from what I've been hearing. But then I also heard, you know, she's, she's good situationally. Like there's certain comps where either her on the team or her call is gonna really help you out. And apparently those comps are comps that I run. Like in fact, I was actually mentioned by name. Like, you know, if you run like clay type comps, Aroha's great. So, oh, okay, then maybe I should pull for her then. Still not really knowing much about what she does, but I just kind of want her. I'm not gonna spend that much though, realistically, because I, I thought I was sitting prettier than I was. I only have like 60 tickets or something like that, because I'm, I'm not gonna do gems. I know in my, here's another plan I'm breaking. I said I was gonna use gems in Aroha. I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore because Lael is coming and I wanna just be, ap ap I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna prioritize Lael over Aroha. 100%. I'm way more hyped for Lael. And I still, I want to actually try saving. Because this day, this game tends to take my gems the second I have enough to pity. And I'm actually at over 100k now, which is very rare for me. I'm gonna probably pity Lael because of that. Guaranteed. I'd love to be wrong about that, but it hasn't happened yet. So, so we'll see. Alright, Tifa. Dude, you gotta wait for the message to go away. I'm just sitting there mashing on the button. Like, why can't I punch stuff? Oh, speaking of Aroha, on the plus side, Bard will not be doing a song for her. So we all get a break. Thank God. Very good position here. He still got two LDs? Damn, Dre. You know what I find? Whenever I use him, which I have been using him a little bit more lately, I haven't really used him... Uh, up until recently, I didn't really use him... Except for the the second boss rush was when I used him. And then he kind of just sat on the bench for a while, but lately I've been running some of these uh, off-turn comps for fun, like in my spare time, and it's it's cool. I like I like using Trey a lot more now that Gallif is here to just really amp up the off-turns. Like this team right here is a lot of fun. I actually ran this on the uh, Bahamut Lufini and it went really well. I didn't upload that though, because I just kind of did the launch comp for that. I could have done that here, but Figured I'd just mix it up, do something I don't often do. Uh-oh, he's gonna go for it. You know, in retrospect, I probably should have used that before, so we could have gotten that break right off the bat, but it, I guess it doesn't matter. So Gallif will counter and get the break. I learned something doing this though. When they get this white aura, yes, you have to break them, otherwise they'll kill you. I thought that breaking them would stop the debuff cleanse before they attack, but it doesn't. They just cleanse whether they get broken or not. But that did significantly cut down the damage that we're about to take, so that's that's good. All right. You know, we're gonna go with dynamite because I know he's gonna cleanse, there we go. So, Refreshing Firewall wouldn't have made sense because he would have just cleansed it anyway. So... Alright, that's one. There, we'll get the off turn for the dynamite. Perfect. And that should do it. Not yet, but now. Nope! Counter kill. Boom. Alright. Well, that was fun. I hope you all enjoyed. And thank you for watching.